What are the best questions a screenwriter can ask themselves to make the story better? What are the best questions a screenwriter can ask themselves to make the story better? One thing is, is how is this my story? How is, whatever this story is, how does it relate to me? So that I can use my emotions to go th to tell this story better. Because what, the weirdest part about being a screenwriter is that we sit in a room alone, we are isolated from society, we uh, basically are cut off from emotional situations, we hate conflict, we hate all of these things that then we're going to use, those are the elements we need to use to make our story passionate and, and emotional and all of those things. So all the things that we sort of fear to deal with, we now have to deal with. And so basically look at the story. One of the things with assignments that I, I have to find a doorway into an assignment. So if I am offered a deal, if I'm offered some thing that I, I read a book, um, whatever, uh, some assignment where they're going to hire you to write the script, I have to look at that and go, how is this story my story so I can tell it honestly? Because if it has nothing to do with me, then I'm just taking money and typing. And the bad part about that is the script will not work. The worst part about it is then you may have to do it a couple of rewrites after that on a script that becomes torture. It's like, I'm just typing this, I'm just writing it, I have no connection to the story. So then it becomes work. And you know, if any of us uh, you know, wanted, to be, wanted to do work, we wouldn't be writers. So even if the story is not exactly similar, no, it doesn't have to be exactly. Me. There has to be, yeah, exactly. There has to be something mm -hmm. in there that's right, right. Mm -hmm. that's that I can relate to. If I don't relate to the story, then it's like I don't I don't get this. So it's like I can. Um, I had a meeting with the people that did that did the Tom Clancy uh, Jack Ryan movies uh, once, and I can totally relate to Jack Ryan, even though. I've never been in the Navy, I've, you know, down the line, but it's like I am a guy that, that is the bookworm who knows things but doesn't necessarily know how to, isn't the action guy. So that's the way that I can get into that story. And I think if you look at the, you know, Harrison Ford, Jack Ryan movies and the Baldwin, Jack Ryan movies, um, those really have the guy who's the fish out of water, who's the, the brainiac who now has to do action stuff where the problem with the reboot version was he was the action guy who had to do action stuff. It doesn't work. You know, it, it didn't work as a movie, but that wouldn't, if I were offered that, I would say I can't do that story. I'm not, I can't relate to that character. I can relate to other characters, but I'm not sure I can relate to that character. So you kind of look at things and go, where's, what's my doorway into this story? And it could be something where it's symbolic. It could be something where, you know, um, if, uh, I'm trying to think of some example now and I can't off the top of my head, but um, the, okay, the, the weirdest part about assignments is that you end up being offered things. You go, that's a movie? So somebody offers you Lego, the motion picture, and you immediately go, there is no story there. But if you find the story in there and you go, okay, I'm going to do a story about a rebel in a world where everything is awesome. I am a rebellious type person, so I can see that story. So you, you find your story in there. And sometimes you look in the material and your story isn't there. You know, there's, there's, there's things you will be offered that you go, I could hack that out and make money, but it would be hack work. So I always try to turn those down and try to wait for somebody to offer me the job where I go, I want to do this project. And whatever that is, the, the, I mentioned the Finland story. The Finland story was a producer that had a deal with Finland and came to me and said, we want to do a complete ripoff of Taken. And I'm like, I don't see that. But I came up, I said, can I work with this and pitch it back to you? And they said, Okay, so they were open to that, which was great. So I basically came up with a story about a novelist who's on a book tour to Finland who writes action books, who's, because he's a famous novelist, ends up going to a, getting invited to the World Wilderness Federation meeting. Um, the vice president of the United States is one of the keynote speakers, as are all these other dignitaries. And so he goes there with his wife, 
um, and his wife wears the exact same color dress as the vice president. And when bad guys come to kidnap the vice president's wife, they get his wife by mistake. So now we sort of have our taken situation. So we have like the, the wrong woman is kidnapped. And now he's got to go from being this guy who is a novelist who writes action stories to the action guy. And so he knows all of this stuff, but has to put it into practice now. So I could write that story. When I pitched it back to them, they said, that sounds great. And so I got that job. So sometimes when they give you the, the, the parameters, the, the outside parameters of the assignment, you can find the story inside that kind of fits within that. So it's, this is like Taken, but it's got my own sort of spin on it where I can tell the story. And of course, husband and wife get closer and closer as the, you know, from this story because now that her life is threatened, you know, they, they rekindle their relationship and all this fun stuff that happens that works for me as the writer, you know. So that's the thing. You find your story in whatever they have. Or if you don't, it's a bad idea to take that job. Take, take you know, wait, some other job will come. So if the character in the film is just someone that's just distasteful to you? That ends up being the problem. And I had... Uh oh, this is the one that okay. I was offered, I was offered a script that uh, to rewrite about a, a an adult male who has a sexual relationship with a nine year old girl, and it was heavily influenced by uh, Leon the Professional, except Leon the Professional hints at some little romance things, and this like took it all away. And when I was offered this, I said, "No way in hell am I going to write this." And I'm kind of afraid to have another meeting with these people. Um, and I completely turned that down because there are characters, there are characters and scenarios that you will be offered that you look at and go, I don't want to tell this story. This, I don't want to have part of this story. There are, I'm sure there are plenty of, of, of uh, uh, I don't think we have, uh, horror films, the torture porn horror films anymore, because I think that's kind of faded away. But I don't think I could write a straight on torture porn horror film, you know, where it's, it's all about killing the people. That doesn't do anything for me. You know, the, I, I had a, a, while those were hot, I did a, a treatment for a story that was about people who wake up in a warehouse handcuffed to the person they most want to kill, to their sworn enemy, and now have to make it through a maze with their sworn enemy handcuffed to them. And I thought, this is it. I could tell this story because it appears to be the torture porn because of all the, the maze has all of these things where people can get killed in it. But what it's really about is forgiving the person that you most hate because now you're trapped with them. And now that you're trapped with them, you don't see them as that person that ruined my life. You see them as another human being who can help you out of these situations. So that was my, my way to do the, to pitch something to the torture porn producers that might get a yes. It didn't, you know, they're like, you know, we would, we would rather see them like cut each other's arms off and escape. Like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to write that story.